This is the first flight on the Yak, and as soon as it started building up any speed in the air, I knew I had a problem. It kept nosing up like I was giving it up elevator, but I wasn't touching the elevator. I put in a bunch of down elevator trim, and that helped it quite a bit at speed. But it was still obvious that there's something wrong. I had just looked down to see how much trim was left on the radio. When I looked back up the plane had silhouetted and I didn't have any idea which way it was going until I saw the wheels on top, rolled it and gave it some up elevator and missed the trees. As you might suspect, I wasn't real happy at this point. And I was going to be even more disenchanted with myself when I realized that I never checked the control surfaces and pretty much enabled this. The first time I talked to Flex Innovations, they suspected the stabs were the problem, but I thought it was CG or thrust line. And it should be no surprise that because Kiki knows what he's talking about and I don't, he was right. So as soon as I agreed with them, they sent me the stabs that they already knew I needed. That was mistake number two on my part. With the new stabs in place, we tried to maiden again. As I was making the climbing turn out from the field, I could already tell that the plane was a lot different with these new stabs on it. We still need to do a bunch of fine tuning and trimming on this, but it's flying a ton better. This just points out that if you have an aerodynamic problem, listen to Kiki, don't listen to me. People that are around me a lot know that when I start doing touch and goes with a plane, I'm getting comfortable with it. The axe still needs some refining in terms of trims and maybe the CG just a little bit, but it doesn't have any bad habits on landings. And despite running pretty rich, the DA-35's got plenty of power to pull this thing up in the sky and do a snap roll now and then. Later that day, someone noticed something fall off the plane, and that turned out to be the right wheel. A couple of the early landings were rougher than I'd like, and that may explain why the axle on all is missing. I used to check landing gear and wheels and that after some rough landings, and I have no idea why I didn't do it this time. Here I'm just flying around a little bit, wasting some time while a friend of mine's running around in the field to see if we can find some taller grass. There was only one patch of sort of tall grass, so I tried belly flopping the plane into that. Right at the end, the tall weed snags the elevators and just slaps the plane down. And that's not good. And this is the maiden flight after replacing the stabs and listening to Kiki. And surprise, surprise, the plane flies great. It did need a few clicks of trim here and there, but it was flying decent all by itself. I'm going to try to invert it on a 45 degree upline, and it's got a nice clean track line. It noses down just a little bit. I played with the trims a little bit, but the yak is getting where it flies nice, straight and level at speed. And it's a good looking plane when it comes by. Another thing that I'm finding I really like about the yak is that it's so friendly with rudder use. The yak's got a nice smooth response to rudder input and you don't need to cross control very much at all. That kind of handling is really good when you've got a crosswind on the runway and you want to hold the nose straight down the line. This is the second flight of the day with everything fixed and the yak is very predictable on takeoff and landings. The yak is by no means difficult to land, but it does like a little bit of throttle, at least that's what it seems like right now. Most of the time I was just bumping the throttle stick up a little bit and the yak smoothed right out and landed great. Most of the time I fly all of my planes with all of the control throw I can get, but you want to be careful with that on the yak. If you're not used to a really fast roll rate, you want to work up to this a little bit. The instruction manual gives you a full set of dual rate settings to help you get started. Something else this yak does very well is fly knife edge. This is the first sustained knife edge flight I tried with this plane, and I can't find any coupling at all. And it doesn't seem that any of that changes a whole bunch when you vary the speed. I'm not using any mixes or anything here, I just put it on knife edge and then point it where I want it to go. Some of the guys were clocking planes with a radar gun. Even though we got the DA-35 running pretty rich yet, it still made a pass at 77 miles an hour, which is impressive for a plane like this. At times on this day we had a pretty good crosswind, and the Yak handles that really well. It's light, so it gets bounced around a little bit, but it's real easy to keep up with. And of course it wouldn't be me if there wasn't a bunch of touch and goes. I think this is great practice and a good way to help develop your fine motor controls. And here we just stuff the rudder in and make a nice pedal turn. There just doesn't seem to be a whole lot of things that the Yak doesn't like doing. And if I would have listened to Kiki the first time around, I would have known that a lot sooner than this. 
It's a little embarrassing to have a company trying to stand behind our products so well and me be the one getting in the way of that. But all that's behind us now and I'm having a lot of fun with my new yak. And stay tuned because we got a little bit of trim refining to do on this and then we're going to put the Aura 8 system in. And we'll do a whole separate story on that. So if you're considering a 35cc plane and want one that handles well and can do just about anything, you need to look at the QQ Yak 54 from Flex Innovations. And no, mine is not for sale. Although I could use a few bucks to get some special sauce to make eating crow taste a little better. <laughs> 